Section 18 of the American Book of the Dog. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jamie Fiddler. The American Book of the Dog. G. O. Shields, Editor. Section 18. The Sussex Spaniel by A. Clinton Wilmerding. The Sussex is one of the many varieties of the land spaniel. In color he is of a golden liver, not over-symmetrical in appearance, nor always graceful in gait and action, but a substantial worker, a valuable companion in the field, as a rule a good retriever on either land or water, and gifted, as are all the sporting spaniels, with a wonderful sense of smell. This breed is not so often met with in this country as are the field or springer, the cocker, clemmer, and Irish water spaniels. In fact, it appears as if but a matter of a few years when the few pure specimens that we have will die off, and the breed become practically extinct so far as we are concerned, unless further acquisitions are sought from the other side and more interest taken in this useful dog by our spaniel fanciers and breeders. It is perhaps an unfortunate condition of things that the few specimens here have not been kept religiously apart from the other breeds, instead of being indiscriminately bred with them. This, however, may be overlooked when we realize the rarity of the breed, and the difficulty and expense entailed in mating them when scattered, as they are, throughout the country. Then, too, with but one or two exceptions within our memory, their classification at bench shows brings them under the head of field spaniels, which title frequently embraces all the larger spaniels, over 28 pounds, excepting the Irish water, Clummer, Sussex, and Springers often competing together in this class. Hence, it is not to be wondered at that, with but few of the breed, and the slight inducement offered to breeders, the disposition has been to breed to the winning blacks among the Springers, to perpetuate strength, length, and flatness of coat. Among the early breeders in England, and owners of the Sussex, appear such men as S. W. Marchant, who at one time claimed to be the only owner of the pure Rose Hill strain, J. Fuller of Rose Hill, Sussex, Rev. W. Shields, Lord Middleton, Lord Derby, Hon. Captain Arbuthnot, H. Saxby, Phineas Bullock, and others. These men were certainly pioneers in the breed, and always stanch upholders of it. Among the purebred dogs of early date, we lend several well-known names that figure liberally in the pedigrees of many of our present prize winners, especially so with the field spaniels, or springers. To this ancestry may be attributed much of the strength, bone, and substance of our present dogs. In tracing out the family tree of a majority of the leading dogs of today, particularly of the Jacob stock, we find the old and familiar names of Burdett's Frank, Marchant's Rover, Burgess's Beb, Old Beb, Mousley's Venus, Bachelor, Bob, Bess, Bounce, etc., etc. These were all said to be of the pure Sussex breed. In the field, this dog is a strong and cheerful worker, of great pluck and energy. As a rule, he is not silent, although there are frequent exceptions to this. He generally gives tongue when approaching game. In many parts of our shooting territory, they should be particularly useful and valuable, in spots where the setter or pointer cannot penetrate. The Sussex being powerful and short of leg, and withal well protected by a thick, flat coat, will fearlessly press his way through the densest briars and undergrowth, and ultimately reach and flush the fur or feather secreted therein. It seems but fair that this much-neglected breed should receive the assistance of the Spaniel Club and, like the Cockers, the Springers, and the Clemmers, be brought into public notice and prominence as the others have been through the efforts of this club. The values of the points and a description of the dog will at once make themselves clear in the following standard for the breed from The Dogs of the British Isles, edited by the late J. H. Walsh, Stonehenge and adopted by that protector and guardian of the Spaniel, the oldest specialty club in America, the American Spaniel Club. Skull, 15. Legs and feet, 10. Eyes, 5. Tail, 10. Nose, 10. Color, 10. Ears, 
five. Coat, five. Neck, five. Symmetry, five. Shoulders and chest, ten. Back and back ribs, ten. Total, one hundred. The skull, value fifteen, should be long and wide, with a deep indentation in the middle and a full stop projecting well over the eyes, occiput full but not pointed, the whole giving an appearance of heaviness without dullness. The eyes, value five, are full, soft, and languishing, but not watering so as to stain the coat. The nose, value ten, should be long, three inches to three and one-half inches, and broad, the end liver-colored, with large open nostrils. The ears, value five, are moderately long and lobe-shaped, that is to say, narrow at the junction with the head, wider in the middle, and rounded below, not pointed. They should be well clothed with soft, wavy, and silky hair, but not heavily loaded with it. The neck, value five, is rather short, strong, and slightly arched, but not carrying the head much above the level of the back. There is no throatiness in the skin, but a well-marked frill in the coat. Shoulders and chest, value ten. The chest is round, especially behind the shoulders, and moderately deep, giving a good girth. It narrows at the shoulders, which are consequently oblique, though strong, with full points, long arms, and elbows well let down. And these last should not be turned out or in. Back and back ribs, value ten. The back or loin is long and should be very muscular, both in width and depth. For this latter development, the back ribs must be very deep. The whole body is characterized as low, long, and strong. Legs and feet, value 10. Owing to the width of the chest, the four legs of the Sussex Spaniel are often bowed, but it is a defect, notwithstanding, though not a serious one. The arms and thighs must be bony as well as muscular. Knees and hocks large, wide, and strong. Pasterns very short and bony. Feet round. And toes well arched and clothed thickly with hair. The fore legs should be well feathered all down, and the hind ones also above the hocks, but should not have much hair below this point. The tail, value ten, is generally cropped and should be thickly clothed with hair, but not with long feather. The true spaniel's low carriage of the tail at work is well marked in this breed. The color, value 10, of the Sussex spaniel is a well marked but not exactly rich golden liver, on which there is often a washed out look that detracts from its richness. This color is often met with in other breeds, however, and is no certain sign of purity in the Sussex spaniel. The coat, value 5, is wavy without any curl, abundant, silky, and soft. The symmetry, value five, of the Sussex Spaniel is not very marked, but he should not be devoid of this quality. End of section 18